the doctrine of the Trinity is one of the um, great doctrines of the Christian faith. And we had a glimpse of the triune nature of God going all the way back to the uh, Old Testament in Genesis when God said, let us make man in our image. And so God spoke in the uh, plural sense in reference to himself. In fact, the Hebrew word for God is El. And God manifests himself throughout the Old Testament as Elohim. And Elohim is the plural form of El. It's the plural form of God. And so you see this plurality of personality within the nature of God, even in the Old Testament. And you get a much fuller revelation of the triune nature of God in the New Testament. In John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So in the beginning, before anything had been made, the Word already was. And the Word was God, and the Word was with God. So you see this mystery of the Trinity that the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are all God and uh, divine, but yet the Father is not the Son, and the Son is not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not the Father, and yet the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all one God. In fact, that's what you see in, uh, in the epistles of John. He says that these three are one. And so God is a compound unity. The word, uh, when God said to Israel, Behold, Israel, the Lord your God is one. That word is ishad, and it means a compound unity, like one bundle of grapes. So God is three and one. He is one God, and yet three personalities. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Three persons in one. Just like you have a family where you have a father, son, and Holy uh, or a father, a son, uh, and a mother, and that's one family, but yet three persons father, mother, child. One family, three persons. And in the same way, you have one God, that's three persons. They're one in essence, they're one in purpose, one in heart, one in mind, and yet distinct in their personhood. So the, the son says, not my will, but yours be done. Uh, or he prayed to his, uh, his father, which, which is in heaven. And so you have this distinction between the father and the son, or at the baptism of uh, Jesus. Jesus is being baptized in the water. The Holy Spirit descends down as a dove, and the father spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So you see a distinction between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit at the baptism of Jesus. And so there's many uh, scriptures that you know indicate um, that Jesus is God, that Jesus was in the beginning with God, that all things, the Bible says, were made through the Son, and that without the Son, nothing was made that was made. So the Son was not made. The Son is eternal. Uh, Jesus uh, coexisted with the Father throughout eternity's past. And everything that the Father made, He made through the Son. He made through the Word. And yet at the Incarnation, the Father, through the Holy Spirit, begot the Son. And so Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, not because the Father created the Son at some point in eternity, but because the eternal Son was incarnated uh, by the Father through the Holy Spirit into the Virgin Mary. And so that's when uh, the Son was uh, begotten or incarnated. So you have this, uh, this doctrine of the Trinity, this triunity, which because God is a triunity or a, a triune being, um, he's not dependent upon his creation for relationships. Uh, whereas, if God was a strict unity, like you have in Islam or in the Quran, uh, then Allah becomes dependent upon creation.
for things like a relationship. Uh, but God is transcendent of his creation, independent, self-sufficient, so that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit throughout eternity had a loving relationship where they loved each other, they were uh, enjoying each other. And this is what Jesus spoke of, uh, that he was loved by the Father in eternity's past, and uh, uh, they had this loving relationship. So I think uh, the doctrine of the Trinity ought to be preached. It's, um, you know, God being transcendent of creation cannot be less than a person, but he certainly can be more than a person. And, uh, you know, the personhood of God being manifested, uh, you know, these three persons of the Trinity, that shows his transcendence of just a normal person. Uh, or just a normal, uh, you know, being. So he's he can be more than a being, more than a person, but not less than, because he's God. So the doctrine of the Trinity ought to be preached, it ought to be believed. It, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful revelation of who Jesus is, of who the Holy Spirit is. You know, the Jehovah Witness have the Holy Spirit just as a, a power. It's the power of God, like the Force in Star Wars. Uh, but the Holy Spirit is spoken of as a person. And the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. You can't grieve a force, but you can grieve a person. Uh, he's a comforter. Jesus said he would send a, a comforter and that he would comfort us. And so you, you have Jesus speaking of the Holy Spirit as a person and, uh, and a distinct person. He said, if you, if you sin against the Father, it will be forgiven you. But if you sin against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven you. So the Holy Spirit is God, and yet the Holy Spirit is not the Father. So you have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father is not the Son, the Father is not the Holy Spirit, and vice versa. And yet they're all one God. They're one in essence, because they're all uncreated. They're one in heart, one in mind, one in purpose. These three are one. Amen? Hallelujah. Go to our website, openairoutreach.com, and click on the link that says Free Christian Books. If you sign up for our email newsletter, I'll send you a whole bunch of free Christian books. Thanks. Dad. You want to film this?